Papa Day! So today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, aluminum can ashtray out of a soda can. Uh, you can make them out of any kind of aluminum can, soda can, beer can, uh, fruit juice. They sometimes come in 12 ounce uh, aluminum cans. You can make them out of the larger like Arizona tea cans or the smaller Red Bull cans or the bigger monster energy drink cans, uh, but generally <clears throat> I make them out of soda cans. And all you need today to make this ashtray, which should appear on your screen, is uh, one can, a pair of kitchen shears, you don't have to go out and buy a pair of tin shears or uh, sheet metal cutters, no need. I prefer kitchen shears. Uh, I was shown how to make this in 1999 uh, when I was at the uh, Guam Micronesian Island Fair. Another weaver showed me how to make this. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> for some of you who are not uh, comfortable with working with the sharp edges, uh, I would suggest maybe wearing a pair of like gardening gloves or a pair of like leather thin leather working gloves so that you don't get your hands. But um, I do this pretty often, so it's, um, I know what to do. I avoid the sharp metal edges. And once you're done, I'll show you, after we're done making it, I'll show you how to uh, smooth out the edges so they're uh, less sharp. But it's still sharp. So keep it away from young children and clumsy adults. That's why I don't keep any in my house, because I'm pretty clumsy. Anyways, uh, so let's begin. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, you'll need one banana and a pair of kitchen shears. So first you'll take the banana and cut off the edge right here, but not all the way through. And then you'll peel back the banana, like so. Then you'll take a bite. Then you'll grab your soda can. Because <clears throat> we really didn't need a banana. But I wanted to have a bite of a banana. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the part that's crucial. This is the flat edge where the can is the cylinder shape. You see how this edge right here ends? Some cans go straight up to the rim, whereas most taper off. Like, uh, a lot of the Coke cans and Pepsi cans taper off, but certain brands of uh, juice cans and um, energy drinks don't taper off as sharply. So what I like to do is the initial cut, I just hold the cans on the table and I place the scissors here and I put one part on the flat side and one part on the indention and I just let the scissor cut into the can like that. Oh, make sure your can's empty and rinsed out. So once you get that initial pierce, I cut on the tapered side so that I don't waste any of this cylindrical part because that's the part we're gonna use to make the estuaries a flat surface. So it, in the beginning it might be difficult to cut but what I do is I place my hand here and on the table and I just use the scissor, wiggle it back and forth, cut, wiggle it back and forth, cut. And you're going to notice that whichever hand you're dominant with, the scissor is going to want to go the opposite direction. So I'm right handed. So while I'm cutting, the scissor wants to naturally go to the left. So you have to constantly recorrect. And this is the part I was telling you about. The waist. Now this part is extremely dangerous, so move it away. <clears throat> and by dangerous, if you rub it on your hand like this, <laughs> it's probably gonna cut you. But you can pick it up, see? Gentle. And move it out of the way. So there's that really jagged edge that I was telling you about. But you notice that my the flat cylindrical part is not um, 
I didn't waste as much. So what I'll do is very carefully bend some of these guys back. Very carefully. Okay, now what I want to do this time is cut as close as possible to where the taper starts so that I can, oh, ooh, I got a Facebook message. So that when I start to make the portion to weave, I will have as much usable material as possible. So this time I'm gonna cut as close as possible to the edge. And this will be very easy to cut because you're not dealing with the rim still in place. So this will move out of the way as you're cutting it. And try and cut as straight as possible, following that tapering part as a guide. Hopefully I'm getting all of this on camera. And this is the part where I cut real slow and make sure that uh, my edge is as flat as possible, or oh, as straight as possible, I should say. cut so make sure when you're cutting try to keep it in one piece so that you can discard it and I had an extra sliver come up so make sure to get that and <clears throat> so far I can only see one shaving from the initial cut so I picked that up with my finger and put it with the rest of the trash unfortunately you can't pick it up with a magnet so that sucks. So there's still a little water left in my can from when I cleaned it. So I'm going to take a napkin and pour it out. Then I'm going to dry it. When you dry your can, be very careful. This is very sharp. So I don't use a spinning motion. I use a. I just put the napkin in and pull it out. Okay. Not like the matter the the water really matters but so now the next part of cutting your can is cutting vertical strips now <clears throat> you'll want them all the same length and you want them all the same width now um generally speaking i cut them about a quarter of an inch in width and in length, I usually leave about an inch to an inch and a quarter for the, the ashtray part, the part that'll hold the ashes. So I use the design of the can, all the pictures and like barcode as a uh, guide to get my first cuts. So what I want to do is when they put the designs on these cans, you can see where there's usually a start or finish like here there's a darker black line uh, or you could use the edge of the barcode and just eyeball it from this part see what I'm saying so use the design to your advantage so I'm going to cut following this darker black line and I doubt you could see it on my cheap little camera however I'm gonna follow that line so that I get as straight as a cut as possible and then just use long even cuts don't do like this measure because then you're not going to get as good of a cut so next I'm going to do follow this text this text is pretty straight so I'm gonna follow the bottom of that writing there as my guide to get as straight of a cut as possible. And when you cut, don't cut to the point where your scissor closes, because then that'll crimp over here or it'll tear it. I learned that a long time ago. That's my first one, so now I bend it outwards like this. There you go. Next, I'll do my next cut 
and I'll follow the line of text right over here because that's about the same width with my other one and it doesn't have to be perfect but your goal is to get each of these pieces the same width and the same length now I made a boo-boo and cut too far so what I'll do is use my hand to bend it at the same level and so no harm no foul so I'm just gonna cut through these real quick and then maybe every two I'll bend them down now just be careful when you're bending these down because this edge is jagged it's not sharp it's just jagged so it'll saw through your finger if you're not careful Okay, now we're done with the scissors for now. So I'm bending my last two. There you go. So now we have the outer rim of the ashtray ready to be bent and woven together and we have the base. So what I like to do is place this flat on a table and just tap it a little to get all of these flattened out. <clears throat> now, um, if you did it correctly, you should have a starburst pattern. Some of mine are closer together than others because I didn't cut down deep enough. So what I'll do is I'll pull them apart a little. <clears throat> and now the final step to weaving, or before you weave, is I take the back of my scissors and I just drag it along to flatten out these pieces. Because while you're cutting them, they probably started to curl. Um, not necessarily onto itself, but um, just started to bend and curl. So, also, I suggest not doing this on a really nice dinner table if you have a really nice dinner table. So now my <clears throat> uh, pieces are ready to be woven for the edge of the ashtray, the lip, if you will. So what I do, since I'm right-handed, is I work counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, you might want to work clockwise. Or you might not care either way. So what I do, depending on the length of my strips, is I measure like this. If it can go <clears throat> over two, I'll, weave, I'll go over two and then bend it under like this. But these look like they're probably not going to be able to do that. So what I'll do is just go over one. So I'll go over one and I'll leave a little space in here for this one to come under at the end. However, I'm going to just pinch this like that. And I'm going to flip it over and you see this part that's sticking there? I'm going to bend him back. So that locks him in place. So when I do this normally, I don't flip it. I bend it over, pinch, and then I use my thumb here to bend back. See how I'm getting a little rim? So then, bend this guy again. Bend him like 
effect. Just flip it over so you can see. Bend him like this. Pinch here. Flip over if you have to. Look for the edge. I don't know if you can see that. This little, the end, the strip end. And then, it's kind of awkward to show on the camera. I'll bend him backwards like that. So now, just keep going until you get to the end. Like I was saying earlier, I learned this in the um, at the Micronesian Island Fair in 1999 when I was uh, a weaver at the exhibition uh, from uh, a real nice lady who also weaves baskets and stuff. And she also made these, so she showed me how to make them. It was really cool. I asked her and she was nice enough to show me how to make these. I'm not sure where she learned how to make them or if she made it, invented it herself because, you know, she is a weaver. So, I'm getting close to the end. I'm at the last two strips. I'm at the last one strip. Now, remember, we bent the strip over one and then crimped it underneath. So this one will bend over the next one and go in, in here and will crimp it. So you kind of have to work it in there. Be very careful so you don't cut yourself. And then once you get it in there, crimp it here, flip it over, and then bend it. Now this is where I flip over the ashtray. And this is the technique I was telling you about to make it less dangerous. Per se. So I take the edge of my scissors again and I bend all of these guys down. You can hammer them, you can go like this, whichever one works best for you. Maybe you can make some music while you're doing it. <clears throat> now, after I've crimped all of these guys so that they're not an issue, maybe use your thumbnail too ensure that the pokey parts are all flattened. That's a real word, by the way, pokey parts, technical term for aluminum can weavers. Uh, now I take the handle again, and these parts I like to flatten out as well. You could leave them a little poofy if you wanted to, but I prefer to flatten them so um, there's not much surface area to uh, these parts when they're crimped are a little bit less cutty. That's another technical worm. Oh, it's a technical worm and a technical word for cutability. So there's my ashtray. Now these parts are sharp, but when was the last time you took your ashtray and were rubbing it on your face or on your hand, you know? If you just grab it, you can grab this ashtray and it's not gonna hurt you. Obviously, if you or sawing motion or a nice little slicing motion, it's going to be dangerous. But if you're pro if you're smoking, you're probably not going to have your kids around playing with your ashtray. So there is your soda can or your well, let's give it a generic name, your aluminum can ashtray woven, and they make these cool sounds. So yeah, so I could, after theoretically, after smoking a cigarette, I could uh, ash it, and then I could lay it on the side. My cigarette is too big. This is a cigar. Ah, you get the point. So yes, this is how to make aluminum can ashtray woven. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave something in the comment section or whatnot. And then uh, I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. So thank you for watching. Oh, I cut my head. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so thanks for watching my video. And uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Goodbye.